Hello everyone, hope everyone is doing well. Today we are going to look at how to test the equality of two different proportions or two proportions collected from two different samples. So basically we may have two samples. Um, we have sample one and sample two and we have a certain number of sample size for each of them. And so from here, we basically calculated some proportion. Let's say maybe the proportion of people saying that they are willing to carpool versus drive alone. So we calculated a proportion. And now what we have to do is find out whether these two samples, the proportions are the same or not. Now, as we said before, you know, whenever we do our hypothesis testing, we test for the population and not the sample. And for the population, we normally denote the proportions as pi. So we will say that the, in, in the population, we are assuming that pi 1 equals pi 2. So the two proportions are equal. And in the alternate hypothesis, we may say that pi 1 is not equal to pi 2. So we will test this. Now, before we test, one of the things we have to find is that whether these two samples are appropriate for this hypothesis testing. And in this case, we have to note that is n1 p1, if I multiply n1 and p1, is that greater than or equal to 5? Or if n1 and 1 minus p1 is greater than or equal to 5. And we do the same thing for n2 and p2. We have to test if n2 p2, n2 times p2 is greater than or equal to 5. And the same thing, n2, 1 minus p2, is that greater than or equal to 5. So once we do this test, and if this is satisfied in all the cases, we can proceed in using the, these two samples for our analysis. So what we are doing here is the point estimate that we know is P1 minus P2. We know that. And we have to test if with the alternate, which is, or the null that is saying, we are saying that pi 1 equals pi 2. But we can also kind of rewrite this as pi 1 minus pi 2 equals to 0. So we will say minus pi 1 minus pi 2. This would be our numerator. And then in the denominator, we have to put in some measure of the standard error. And then this would give us our z stat. And then using this z stat, we compare it with the critical z. And then we make a decision whether we reject the null or do not reject the null. So it's a simple procedure. We do have to figure out how to make this standard error or how to calculate the standard error using these numbers. So let's go to our analysis. Let's look at an example to see how we can do this. Supposing we have two samples, n1 is 100 and n2 is 200. It's a good idea to just write them here. So let's say I have sample one and sample two. n is 100 for sample one and 200 for sample two. Now we're looking at the proportion of left-handedness in each of those samples. So it says that in the first sample, 40% is, so I'll just write 0 0.40, and in the second sample, it is 0 0.32. Then 1 minus p, which is the proportion of people right-handed, would be 0.6 and 0.68. So from here, I didn't really need to find the right-handed numbers, but I just did because we actually need to do that n times p and n times 1 minus p. We have to do that calculation just to see if we can use the sample or not. So let's try that. So n times p is going to be 40. Well, that's nice. And so I'm going to copy and paste the uh, formula here, and I get 64. And now when I do n times 1 minus p, I get these two numbers. And so they're both greater than 5. So we can use these two samples for our analysis. So in this case now, we have to find the numerator, which was, as we showed, was just the p1 minus p2. And then the denominator is what we will be working on right now, which is the standard error. So what we will do here is 
we, we will assume that the standard uh, deviation of these two samples are in the population are equal. And so that is why we will be using eventually a Z distribution. So we are going to find the, so what we need to do next is find the standard error as we talked about, which was what we put in the denominator. So for that we need, before we even start this, what we would like to calculate is the pooled proportion of left-handed people in these two samples. So we would assume that, okay, if supposing we combine these two samples together, what would be the proportion of left-handed people in the big sample? So that would basically be the number of left-handed people in each of this group, which is 40 plus 64 divided by the total number of people in that large sample. And so we would get a number like 0.34667. So the formula for this, just to give a recap, is going to be x1 plus x2 divided by n1 plus n2, where, you know, x1 and x2 are the number of people are, who are left-handed. So if we basically calculated p1 was equal to x1 over n1, and p2 equals x2 over n2, then we can easily see how we get this value. So after we found the pooled proportion, now we have to find the standard error. And the formula for the standard error is basically going to be, if I call this p bar, then it will be p bar times 1 minus p bar. And then in a big parenthesis, we'll have 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. And the whole thing will be in a, under a square root. So this is actually n2. So to calculate that, we can do equals 2. Let's for, uh, let me first find the whole thing and then I'll take the square root of it. So we would do p bar times 1 minus the p bar times 1 over n1 is 100 that we have here plus 1 over n2, which is 200. So I'll just put this up here. So this is the number, the first number that we calculated. And now we are going to find the other part. Let me move this over a little so we can see the formula and what we are doing. So now taking the square root, we can find the standard error, which would be square root of that number. And so this is the standard error. Let me write this as standard error steps so we know that this was step one, and then in the step two, we took the square root of that. So now we can find our z stat, which will be the difference between the two proportion of left-handedness, which was 0.4 minus 0.2, or 0.4 minus 0.32, sorry, divided by the standard error that we have here. So it comes up to be 1.37. Now, after we find the Z stat, we then compare it with the Z critical value. Let's say we are testing at alpha at 5%. So since it's a two-tailed test, we would do norm.inv, or actually we need s.inv. And the probability would be 0 0.05, but since it's two-tailed, I would put it into different um, ends of the normal distribution tails. So I get negative 1.5959. Now if I draw this, I can see that since it's a two-tailed test, so one tail would be negative 1.959. The other tail is, however, my z stat that I calculated is somewhere here. So we can see that the z stat is definitely in the non-rejection region, so we do not reject the null. And so we would then say, since the z stat, the proportion of left-handedness in these two different samples are basically, or statistically, they are the same. Now let's look at how to find the confidence interval. The confidence interval of this difference between the two proportions. So we said that in the point estimate that we looked at, so one proportion had 40% um, of, of uh, left-handedness, and in the second one, the proportion was 32%. So the point estimate, or P1 minus P2, 
is basically equal to 0 0.4 minus 0 0.32, which is 0 0.08. Now we will find what is the 95% confidence interval of this point estimate. Now for that, we're going to use a very similar formula as we used before. And it will basically be the point estimate. So we have this number, P1 minus P2, and then plus minus some um, the critical value of Z, and then times some number for the standard deviation or the standard error. So here the formula is going to be, so we are going to find each of the variances separately. So we will find this one and this one, and then add it together and take a square root of that. And then find, we already know the critical value and we have the differences, so we can easily find that. So let's first find, we can actually probably do it up here. It would be easier to look into it. So let's add the column for or some numbers for variance. So we have the variance. So we are going to find P1 times 1 minus P1 over N. So we will do equal to P1 times 1 minus P1, which I already found here, divided by N, which is sample size. So once I find that, what I will do is find the pooled standard error, which was basically just the square root of this variance and this variance. So we have our number here. So again, just looking at it, what did we do? We took P1 times 1 minus P1 divided by N1 and P2 plus 1 minus P2 or times 1 minus P2 divided by the other samples, sample size. So now we have that here. Let us just, this is my point estimate. My Z critical is going to be just this number. I'm going to put a negative in front of it so that it is positive number. And I have my standard error, which is this number here. Now it is kind of confusing. Why are we using it this separately here? And why are we pulled, pulling it in the other one? Well, the textbook that I followed did it in this two ways. So that's why I'm doing it that way. And we will say the lower bound, it's going to be the p value or the differences minus the z critical value that I have times standard error. And the upper bound, it's going to be the differences plus the z critical value times the standard error. So it's telling us that the 95% confidence interval is stating us that the difference in left-handedness between these two populations, although we use the samples, but we have to always interpret up the population, population is somewhere will lie somewhere between negative 0 0.03 to negative or 0.1957 since you know we cannot rule out zero and zero falls within this so therefore that's another way of saying well we cannot reject the null hopefully this was helpful and i will see you at a later video have a good day goodbye